Hello. Today we're going to talk in this video about the testing procedure for utilizing the Severin Engineering Permeability Indicator to determine the permeability range, magnetic permeability range, for a metallic test specimen. Now this particular permeability indicator was created with a set of 11 matching inserts those 11 inserts have a permeability range from 101 up to 2.5. And um, although I'm discussing today the permeability indicator, the testing procedure I'm going to outline is exactly the same for our Severn Engineering Ferrite indicator. Now before we start talking about the test procedure, I want to talk about the testing conditions. We want to try to isolate uh, the testing surface uh, as much as we can from any type of magnetic material. The table I'm actually working on is a plastic table uh, with a fiberboard, uh, thin fiberboard layer on top. Then I have an inch and a half thin, thick rigid foam and on top of that I have a three quarter inch uh, acrylic plastic surface. So what I'm trying to do is make sure I am not near any type of magnetic material. If you have to use a metallic table to do the testing on, then I would suggest that you make sure that the distance between the table surface and the test surface that you're using is at least three inches. Now I'm selected a, a acrylic sheet or acrylic uh, layer here to use because it's nice and hard and you do want a nice hard surface to put your sample on. The rigid foam, although it's quite rigid, is still I don't feel hard enough uh, to actually do the testing. So I use an acrylic plastic uh, material. Now to continue the uh, process to show you the testing procedure, I'm going to have to change the orientation and location of the camera. So we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I've moved the camera now to a different uh, orientation, basically looking uh, parallel to the surface of the table and parallel and uh, parallel to the surface of the uh, test surface here. I've got my sample that I'm going to uh, try to evaluate, and uh, I've. Ahead of time, I have uh, suspect that this sample has a permeability somewhere between 1.01 and 1.05. So I've basically taken just um, three of the inserts out, 101, 102, and uh, 105 uh, that I'm going to use for testing here. And uh, let me talk about the instrument just a second. I'll move it out front and center. What you're going to see is the instrument itself is very, very simple. It is simply a balance beam made out of non-magnetic material, but it does have a bar magnet uh, fixed at the right end here vertically inside the collar of this beam. And the uh, mechanism or the principle behind this device is that uh, this end of the bar magnet that sticks out, protrudes out the bottom, is going to come into contact with the test specimen. And there's going to be a attractive force exerted between the bar magnet and the test specimen at the bottom. There's also an attractive force exerted between the top end of the bar magnet and the bottom of this calibrated insert that we have, in this case again the 105. And um, what I'm going to try to do is determine which of those two attractive forces is larger. If I take my test specimen here and bring the end of the magnet into contact with it and then try to slowly move the indicator away from the surface vertically. What I observe is I'd look at different points along the length of this specimen is that nothing's happening. 
Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that the attractive force that's being exerted between the bar magnet at the bottom and this specimen is going to be less than the attractive force that's being exerted between the other end of the bar magnet and the bottom of this calibrated insert. As I try to move, or as I do move, the indicator away from the surface of my sample, the magnet end attached, or not attached, but attracted to the bottom of the insert stays there. It doesn't pull away. Instead, the end of the magnet that is in contact with the sample pulls away. So consequently, the attractive force between the sample and my bar magnet is less than the attractive force between the other end of the bar magnet and the bottom of this insert. And that means that the magnetic permeability of this sample is less than 1.05. Okay, um, if I switch out to a slightly lower value of insert, the 10102, that's the next lowest one that I have in this set. Now when I repeat the process, what I see is a different reaction. As I touch it, put the bottom of the bar magnet in contact with the sample and then pull the indicator away slowly. What I'm seeing is that the bottom of the bar magnet wants to stay in contact with the sample and it pulls the top end of the bar magnet away from the calibrated insert. And the only reason that contact is broken between the sample and the bottom end of the bar magnet is because this collar comes down and contacts the bottom surface of this clear case. And that means that the attractive force between the specimen and the bottom of my bar magnet is larger than the attractive force between the top end of the bar magnet and the bottom of the insert. And consequently I can say that the magnetic permeability of this sample is larger than the value of the insert, in this case 1.02. So what we've determined now is the magnetic permeability of this sample is between 1.02 and 1.05. And that's how this instrument is designed to work. It's not going to give you an exact value for the magnetic permeability, but it is going to give you bounds of regarding the magnetic permeability. So the upper and lower bounds of magnetic permeability. In this case, magnetic permeability of a sample is between 1.02 and 1.05. And that's basically how this indicator works.